last goal is going to be to take one of these three functions. And for today, um, I think just to make our lives as simple as possible, um, I'm going to focus on this h of x function, the step function, or the so-called heaviside function. And we're going to look at why it is that this function violates all three of these definitions, equivalent definitions of what it means for a function to be continuous. Um, so let's go to the graph. Here it is, a uh, graph of our heaviside function. Um, and first, let's think about why it is that it violates the limit definition. So the limit definition of continuity would require for this function at x equals 0, so limit as x tends to 0 of h of x, would need to equal h of 0. Well, why is this not satisfied by this function? This is a question that we could have answered back in a calculus class, um, but give me, the, give me the short rundown. Why is it that this equation does not hold for this function? What goes wrong? Back in calculus, we would have written it as the limit as x tends to 0 from the left of h of x gives us one thing, gives us 0, whereas the limit as we approach 0 from the right side, h of x, gives us something else. And so back in calculus, um, we sort of took for granted that what this means when the limit is different from the both sides, what does that tell us about the limit as x tends to 0, the two-sided limit? It tells us that that two-sided limit doesn't exist. So that, in calculus, was our rationale for this. This limit does not exist. Now, if we wanted to be really real analysis -y about this, um, we could show specifically why that limit doesn't exist, why that epsilon delta definition is not satisfied. Um, the hard thing, though, is that using the definition of convergence um, for, for a function requires us to specify what value we wanted this function to converge to. Um, and so that gets a little bit harder. It gets a little bit trickier. Um, I'm going to buy, I'm going to sidestep that rigorous argument. And one of the reasons that I want to sidestep it is that it will turn out that the other two definitions um, make that technical challenge that we would have for showing that this limit doesn't exist. Um, not only that it's not equal to zero, for example, but that it doesn't exist at all, that that technical challenge is more easily met by the other two equivalent definitions. So I think for the sake of the limit definition, we will just stop here uh, and say that the reason that the limit definition is not satisfied is that this limit doesn't exist, even though the right-hand side, the value of h of zero, does exist and is equal to one. Okay. So the limit definition is violated by this step function. How about the open set definition? The open set definition says... Um, that f is continuous at uh, a point of the domain um, if every open set that contains f of a has a preimage in which a is an interior point. This is a really convoluted way of being, specific, more, being more specific about the idea that the inverse image, the preimage, of every open set should be an open set. So if we want to show that that is violated, what I want to show is that there exists, I'm going to write it this way, I want to show that there is an open set, U, which contains H of 0, remember H of 0 is equal to 1, so there exists an open set that contains 1 that has the property that the inverse image, H inverse of U, Um, does not have zero as an interior point. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. First of all, h of zero equals one. That's a value that we're going to find on the y-axis, right? Because it's a value of the function. So the one that corresponds to that observation is the one that's right here. And so the set u that I want to look for is going to be a set that I'm going to diagram on the y-axis somewhere. So I want some subset of the y-axis that contains the number 1. Um, let's just try choosing, and it has to be an open set, remember. Um, let me just try choosing an interval, just an open interval, the nicest example of what an open set can be. Maybe I'll just choose this open interval right here from 0.5 to 1.5. And so this shaded set 
here on the axis is going to be my set u. So let me write this down here. If u equals 0.5 to 1.5, then u is an open set. By the way, what does it mean for a set to be an open set? What's the definition? A set is open if every one of its points has breathing room, a little bit of wiggle space, inside of the set. Right? In other words, if, there, if for every point in the set there exists a positive distance, C, such that the entire open interval from that point minus C to that point plus C is all within the set, is all a subset of U. And indeed, every point, every real number between 0.5 and 1.5 uh, exclusive of the endpoints, remember. Um, any of those numbers that I pick is going to have breathing room inside the set. Right? A, a little tiny, teeny tiny, perhaps, open interval around that point, which is also contained entirely within U. So that's why this is an open set. And every open interval that we can define using open interval notation will be an open set. So now what we need to do is figure out what's the inverse image, H inverse of U. And there we're asking, what values of X have H of X within this interval from 0.5 to 1.5. So based on the graph, how would you answer that question? What are the values of x for which h of x is between 0.5 and 1.5? So be looking on the x-axis now. For the parts of this graph, maybe another way to say it, I'm going to try and diagram this in a reasonable way. For those For those y values that are between 0.5 and 1.5, so the y values that are in this strip here, what are the x values that correspond to those y values on the graph? So we're just going to kind of project this part of the graph down to the x-axis. And what part of the x-axis do we get? Zero to infinity. Inclusive or exclusive of zero? inclusive of 0, because h of 0 is indeed equal to 1. So we've just described, in words at least, what the inverse image of the set u actually is. Um, how would we describe it as an interval? What is h inverse of u in interval notation? You told me 0 to infinity. But right, this is inclusive of 0. So we'll put a square bracket there. OK, great. So now we did the, the function, the set theoretic function part. We chose an open set u. We identified what its inverse image was. Now, what do you notice about this inverse image that wasn't true of the original set? How is it different? It includes that endpoint at 0. What are we trying to show? We're trying to show, in order to justify that this is not a continuous function at 0, we need to show that 0 is not an interior point of this inverse image. And is 0 an interior point of the closed interval from 0 to infinity? It's not. And now remind me why 0 is not an interior point of this set. If I'm standing here at 0 and I reach out my arms to some positive distance on either side of me, what happens? Yeah, I'm good over on this side, but all the points to the left of me are outside of the set. So zero is not an interior point of the inverse image of this set, and therefore, we have violated the open set definition of continuity. Continuous means that any time I choose an open subset of the range, the pre-image will have to be an open subset of the domain. And here's an example of an open subset of the range whose pre-image is not an open subset of the domain. In fact, what is H inverse of U? What kind of subset is it? It's not open, but it does happen to be closed. Why is it closed? What's the definition we could use for closed to justify why this set is a closed set? In which open set? Yes, its complement is an open set. What open set? Uh, well, not you exactly, right? But if we take the complement of this set, 
so do, 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 zero infinity complement, the complement within the real line. How would I write that complement in interval notation? It'd be minus infinity to zero, exclusive of zero, and that is an open set. Right? Now, it's not true that every set which is not open is closed, and vice versa. Um, but it is true for this example um, that H inverse of U is a closed, it does happen to be a closed set, not just not open, it happens to be closed. For our last example, we want to show that this function, the step function, violates the sequence definition of continuity. The sequence definition of a continuous function says that any convergent sequence of X values will map to a sequence of Y values which converges to the value that f takes at the limit of the x values. In other words, if my x values converge to a, then my y values have to converge to f of a. That's what the sequence definition of continuity is saying. In order to show that this function violates that, we would need to find an example of a sequence of x values. Find a sequence of x values that converge to 0 because 0 is the point in question here, but for which the y values do not converge to f of 0. So how would we do that? How would I find a sequence of x values converging to 0 whose y values don't converge to h of 0? Remember, h of 0 is equal to 1. So what sequence of x's on this graph can I choose? whose y values don't converge to 1, even though the x's converge to 0. Where should I look for those x values? Maybe it's a better way for me to ask this. If I want the y's not to converge to 1, what's really the only other value that the y's can converge to on this graph? How about 0? And that part of the graph where the y values are equal to 0 is over here. So let's choose a sequence of x values that converge to 0, but which are all chosen from among negative x's. So maybe I'll choose my first x value to be 1, s1. And then maybe s2 is here, s3, s4, and so on. So maybe I'll choose sn equals minus 1 over n for my x values. So I get the sequence of x values that converges to 0 on the x-axis. So that does converge to 0. Converges to zero because of the Archimedean principle. Right? Okay, so there are my x values. They converge to zero. What are their y values? What is f of Sn? All of my Sn's are less than zero. And for this step function, f of those negative values is equal to zero for all n. And therefore, what does that sequence of y values converge to? It converges to 0. So in other words, the picture is that h of 0 is up here. But the limit of my f of sn is down here. So because there's this jump in the graph, we can create a sequence of x's that converge on one side of the jump when in fact the value of the function resides on the other side of that jump. And so this function also doesn't meet the sequence definition of continuity either.